Welcome back to Ambition and Grit with Dave Leniger. We all know that to be successful, you must be productive. No matter what stage of business you are in, it is important to set clear goals, prioritize your tasks, set deadlines, delegate, and take breaks. But it seems like every day there are new articles sharing different productivity hacks and advice. Batch your meetings, download this app, use shortcuts on your keyboard. So what actually works? In today's episode, Dave shares his time-tested secrets and the tools he has used to stay productive throughout his 50 years of business. He gives practical ways you can unlock the power of productivity and achieve greater success in your life and business. Let's tune in. So, always the question is, when you started Remax, were you an organized individual and a good time manager? And the answer is, I did poorly. There are so many elements when you start a startup and you think you're busy then, wait until you've got 150,000 agents around the world and 20 different companies. Then you really realize how busy you are. So Plato said it best years ago, and it was something to the effect of necessity is the mother of invention. And that when you have everything stacked up, all the calls coming and all the business to be done, it's very hard to manage. You have to prioritize. And prioritization, for me, worked out good with Gail as my administrative vice president. She handled the administrative and managerial functions. I handled the training, the recruiting, and that type of thing. And so we were able to divide. And then as we make profits, you hire better people. When you start a small business, you're the chief cook and bottle washer because you have more time than you have money. Once you reach a level of cash flow, then you can hire somebody else to do the less meaningful tasks and prioritize yourself on the ones that make the most money. Also, the more successful you become, the more likely it is you can hire somebody better than yourself in most of the areas of management. As Remax grew, Dave knew that he needed a system for managing his time a way to make sure he could focus on his priorities and not get bogged down in the urgent but unimportant tasks. I was fascinated with time management. I needed to figure out how you manage time. And time management's a misnomer. It's basically organization. Someplace I read and then I copied it and I don't know who to attribute it to, but I saw there was a 4D concept. And so the 4D theory is very simple. The first and most important D is dump it. Something comes across your desk, it's not of interest, not of value, not important to your business, dump it. The second D is delegate it. If you got somebody you can delegate it to, then make a note to it, scribble a note on it, please handle this, but you don't even have to tell me how you handle it, goodbye. Or please bring a solution and tell me what you want to do and I'll prove it. The third D is delay it. Creative procrastination is a great labor-saving device. And a lot of times, you have an invitation, can you come speak at our January meeting? And you find the piece of paper in February is still there. Dump it. Should have dumped it first. But delaying it sets a lot of things off. The final D is do it. But then you prioritize your do it. One of the biggest struggles that business owners face when it comes to productivity is staying focused and motivated. With the many day-to-day -day tasks that need to be completed, how do you choose what to work on and what will produce the most value to your business? Dave explains his system for organizing his daily tasks. I did a study of Remax agents, and this goes back 40 years ago. And I was doing a seminar circuit, some cities 100 people, some cities a thousand. And I started teaching a time management system. And so I asked everybody and said, write down everything you do every hour that you're awake. So they did. And then I said, okay, now I want you to go through and mark them A's and B's and C's. So in the real estate business, A's earn your money. Go to the closing, get a check, go make a prospect call, show a house. All these things are what make you money. Go on a listing presentation call builder and say, can I get your trade-in business? Those are all A's. 
The bees lead the money, write advertisements, take floor time, sit on an open house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. C's are necessary evils. You got to go to the weekly sales meeting. You got to go tour the new properties that are for sale. You got to get gasoline and a car wash because that's your office. And then what we found out was we divided everybody into $100,000 and up or $60,000 and less and looked at their facts and figures. The people making $100,000 or more spent 80% of their time on A's. The people making 60 or less spent 80% of their time on B's and C's. And people would say, I got to pick up the dry cleaning. I got to get my car washed. And they just zip right through and line through their C's. The A's did the A's first. I've got to call these five prospects. I call five X at last year's customers once a year and see how they do. And so this ABC prioritization method works extremely well if you're in a sales field. Works just as good for the manager. I've got to recruit agents. I've got to collect the bills from the agents every month. You have to prioritize. And what you measure is what's most important in prioritization. I think the most important thing is either the last thing at night or the first thing in the morning, you need to start out and make your daily to-do list. And you know what you've got ahead of you. And you already know, do you have an appointment at nine for a showing? Do you have a closing at two o'clock in the afternoon? So you start blocking out your time period. And so the things you've got appointments with already, you're going to put at the top of your to-do list. You're not going to cancel those appointments. And then you prioritize the rest into your A's and B's and C's. And unfortunately, if you're down to an eighth of a tank of gas and you don't have an assistant to help you, you're going to have to slide in someplace and get gas. You can do that at six o'clock in the morning, by the way. All the gas pumps are open. You can do it at nine o'clock at night when it's too late to talk to the customer. You have to make money or you can't make payroll. If you don't make sales, you don't make money. Knowing what to prioritize and how to manage your time is only half the battle. It can be difficult to create goals that are specific and measurable so progress can be tracked while also making sure your goals are achievable and realistic. The problem with goal setting is that goal setting in itself, it's a journey. You accomplish the goal, what have you done? A lot of people will say, I want to lose 20 pounds. They do what they have to do. Cut back on the calories, they increase the exercise, get the 20 pounds off, I'm never going to slip again. And lo and behold, six months later, they've gone back into the same old habits. The system of achieving goals is systems. It's quite simple. And what is your system going to be? So establish your goal and establish what are your systems of getting there. And so you say, I want to drink six glasses of water every day. And so you put that in your little tracker or easier than that yellow pad of paper or a calendar, and it's on your desk, and you're reminded six glasses a day. Every time you drink a glass of water on the calendar, in that day, make a hash mark. Then if you get the six glasses, put a big X through that day of the calendar. All of a sudden, you have two days in a row, three days in a row, five days in a row, and you've got it. The first of the year, everybody sets a New Year's resolution, and they all want to run out and they're going to work an hour a day, every day, seven days a week for the next six months and get svelte and skinny. And they all give up within two weeks. Small steps lead to great achievements. It's called the Kaizen principle. And the small steps are easy to do. They're also easy not to do. And so for a long time, I was doing safaris in Africa. And so I set my goal to walk two hours a day. And I achieved that. But I started out with a 10 minute walk. So I had to do the next 10 days. I cut the month in thirds, 10 and 10 and 10 or thereabouts. And then I'd keep a chart. That's all I had to do was I had to walk 10 minutes, not run, not jog, not even get into tennis shoes, just walk. Then after 10 days, I said, I want to walk 12 minutes a day, then 15. Then after another 10 days, then 20, and within three months, I was walking two hours a day. I lost a lot of weight. My lung capacity was good. 
and I could walk sanctuary nonstop up and down the hills and two hours flat. When I was out of shape, it was two hours and 20 minutes because I had to stop three times going up each hill and catch my breath. And so starting things on an incremental small basis, look at some goal that you really want to accomplish. And it could be any small step that you think would help get you where you want to go. Dave's not afraid to make progress towards his goals step by step. It's the incremental changes that have led to massive success over time. But there will always be obstacles to your productivity. Let's hear how Dave has been able to overcome these challenges. The greatest labor-saving device known to man, or to a businessman anyway, is to learn the word no. The diplomatic way to tell somebody no, uh, diplomacy. The ability to tell somebody to go to hell and make them look forward to the trip. But the real way to say no is offer an alternative. Dave, can you come to my sales meeting in, let's say, Canyon City, Colorado? We got a very nice office down there and give a raw, raw presentation for our agents. And I'd have to say, you know, I travel 250 days a year and I literally can't do that. I may be in Frankfurt the next day and I have to go where I have the biggest crowds, but I would be willing to tape a DVD and send it to you for the sales meeting, congratulating you on whatever you've accomplished. Give me a brief outline. I'll shoot it today. And we have a standing rule here. Anything happens in the network I should know about, somebody's supposed to tell me and they'll get through to me. So like we had a World War II vet that was his 90th birthday and he was still a REMAX agent. And so they gave me the information where he served at in World War II and I sent him a, a note and thanked him, told him I was a Vietnam vet and where I had served and I saw what he had done and that he'd gone on to raise two wives and 12 grandchildren. And so I said, that's a wonderful accomplishment. And he sent me an autographed picture of him in World War II, sent to headquarters and said, boss, thanks for the nice note. Almost all jobs, there are big chunks of time that you need to really work hard. And by chunks of time, I'm talking 60 minutes to 90 minutes. And so you have a big task, you had a big project. It might take 20 chunks of time. So you budget out, out over 15 or 20 days and you divide it which are most important. And then you have to have privacy. You got to shut the door, keep the door shut. And this is your 90 minutes. Don't interrupt me unless the building's on fire or if one of the kids is hurt or something like that. And you have to be stand tall on it. And almost every time anybody sees my door shut, even if I haven't told them what I'm doing, it's, I'm not gonna open that door. Setting boundaries around your time, creating achievable goals, managing your daily tasks and team are all components of becoming a highly productive and successful person. Perhaps most importantly, you must have patience with yourself as you grow. The daily to-do list is an absolute must. Taking tiny steps to change is an absolute must. Productivity is not an end game. It's a journey, and you move forward very slowly at a time. As pilots like to say, at our age, there's not a hell of a lot of runway left, and so a day to us is different than a day to you because I don't have the number of days left that you've got. They're more important to me. There's a saying about toilet paper. Life and toilet paper is the same. Toilet paper comes off very slowly at first. You get close to the end, it's coming off really quick. And so what you have to find out is how valuable is your time? What do you want to accomplish with it? And don't let anybody take it away from you. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. To find more episodes of the show and learn more about Dave and his story of ambition and grit, visit ambitionandgrit.com. And if you love the show, be sure to hit subscribe and leave a rating and a review wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, remember everything in life worth having takes a little ambition and grit. Oh,